Welcome to Faith Revival Place International Faith, Faith Revival Holiness Church. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you and cherish you. Thank you, Father, for your holiness today, your, the faithfulness that we need to have for you, and the celestial love, not the religious or the worldly or the lust, no, but your celestial love, your love, kind of love that you process throughout all the Bible. You love the righteous so much that you judge the wicked. You love the righteous so much that you correct them when they're wrong so that they can be successful in life. And and your love is greater, so you lay it down. So you ask us to lay ours down every day for your your ways and your and and helping others. And we thank you, Father, and we praise you. Amen. Today we're doing the tour of, of literature series some more. The title today is Torah Shemot. Torah meaning good teachings of God. Also later down the line it means law as well. Shemot meaning names, important of names. Um, Pecuity, Pecuity means accounts. He made... He made a man. He's making us do something beautiful with our hands, with our obedience. Amen. And it's Exodus chapter 39, verse 22 through 43, and 41 through 38. This is the last of Exodus. And the Lord God speaketh in the word and saith, He made the robe of the ritual vest. It was woven entirely of blue, blue meaning God is the Lord of Lords, with its opening in the middle like the coat of mail, with the bordering around the opening, so that it would, wouldn't tear. On the bottom hem, they made pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet. Blue represents the Lord of Lords. Purple, King of Kings, Scarlet, the, etern the eternal salvation of God. Woven in within, and they made the bells of pure gold, put the bells around the pomegranate, liberty, justice, and freedom from God. And put the bells between the pomegranates and all the way around the hem of the robe between the pomegranates. The pomegranate itself represents that the uh, that he saved us out of our sins. Because the cut the pomegranate open and it has uh, bloody seeds. But the crown is on top of the pomegranate represent he is... He is taking care of his own. That is the bell, the pomegranate, the bell, pomegranate, and all the way around the hem of the row for the service as Yahweh had ordered um, Moshe. And then they made the ornaments of the holy tunic of pure gold, wore on the the, the words set apart for Yahweh. Amen. we got to be set apart for Yahweh. Holy. Let the entire agreement of, on the seal. Tie blue cords on its fringes. It to be front of the tunic. And as Yahweh had ordered Moshe. Thus all the work for the tabernacle. The the tents of meetings were finished and the people of Israel doing everything exactly as Yahweh had ordered Moshe and then they brought the tabernacle to Moshe the tent of all the furniture the crossing the planks the cross boards the, po the posts the sockets covering the, the tan ram skins covering the fine leather and curtains of the screens the Ark of the Testimony, it pulls the Ark of Covering. The tent 
I mean the tap uh, table, all the utensils, the, the snow boards, the pure menorah, its lamps, their aroma for display, it, it accessories and the oil of the light, the gold altar, the, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, and the screens for the entirety to the tents. The bronze altar with the bronze gate, the poles and all its utensils, the basins with the base, the tapestries and the courtyard with its poles, the sockets and the screens for the entirety of the courtyard with its robes and tent pegs, all the utensils for its service in the tabernacle, the tent of meetings, the, the uh, garments of offering, for the service of the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron and the Kohims, the garments for his sons to serve his office of Kohims. Kohims meaning the, the priest, set apart priesthood. And then the bronze is uh, the, ref the refinement, refining us back. And then silver, of course, represents the uh, uh, the purifying, the uh, the pureness of, of back to God, and then gold is is the wisdom, the authority, the majesty of God. And Yahweh said to Moshe, on the first day of the first month, you are to set up the tabernacle, the tent of meetings, put the ark of the for the testimony, the the cons console the ark with the curtain bring the ta tab uh, table the array the in the display bring the menorah the light its lamps set the gold altar for incense in front of the ark of testimony set the screens at the uh, entrance of the tabernacle please Place the altar for the burnt offerings in front of the entirety of the tabernacle, the tent of, uh, for the of meetings, set the base between the tent of meetings and the altar, and put the water in it. Set up the courtyard all around and hang up the screens in, in the entrance of the courtyard. Take the anointing oil and the anointing anoint the tabernacle and everything in it consecrate it with all its furnishings and then it will be holy Yahweh I mean the anoint the altar for the burnt offerings with the utensils consecrate the altar then the altar will be especially holy so God wants us to understand the reflection of the physical with now the spiritual if you're born again you're that holy tabernacle the holy temple and we must anoint ourselves every day with the word of god with prayer and with sometimes even physically with oil especially when you're not feeling well and anointing your places of residency as well amen and then bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meetings and wash them with water put a holy garment on Aaron anoint him consecrate him so that he can serve me with the office of Kohim bring his sons put tunics on them anoint them as your as you anointed their father so that they can serve me uh, the office of Kohim and their anoint, anointing with uh, that the office of Kohim is there through all generation. It says throughout all generation. It never ends. So those of you and there's some of you that try to re do replacement uh, theories on, on uh, that now the church has that no they don't this says throughout all generations the tribe of Levi, those that are part of that tribe of Levi, throughout all generations we are god's kohim 
and through what he picks through the Levi, the tribe of Levi. And Moshe did this, and he acted in accordance with everything Yahweh had ordered him to do. Now on the first day, of the first month, on the second year, the tabernacle was set up. Moshe erected the tabernacle, put its sockets in the place, put the planks, put it across bowls, and set it, it as a post. He spread the, the tent over the tabernacle. He put the covering of the tent above it. And as Yahweh had ordered Moshe, and he took the put and put the testimony inside the ark. He put the poles of the ark and set, set the ark covering above of the ark. And then he brought the ark into the tabernacle, set up curtains as a screen, cons consecrating the ark for for the testimony as Yahweh had ordered Moshe and and he put the table in the tent of meetings on the side of the tabernacle facing the north now outside the curtain he arrayed a row of a bread on it before Yahweh and and Yahweh had ordered Moshe and he put the menorah menorah seven uh, candles in one and the ten of meetings, and there's always usually two, mind you, as well. From the table, and on the side of the tabernacle, and facing south. And then it, he lit the lamps before Yahweh, and as Yahweh had ordered Moshe, he set the gold altar in the ten, ten of meetings in front of the curtain, and burning on the incense made from uh, the aromic spices, and as Yahweh had ordered Moshe. And he set up the screens at, at the entrance of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offerings he placed in the entrance of tabernacles, the tent of meetings, and offered on the burnt of offerings, the grain offerings, as Yahweh had ordered Moshe. And we do the offerings of today, through prayer it, because the Lamb of God the perfect Lamb of God was slain on the cross of Calvary eternally and so we do it through prayer we consecrate ourselves we consecrate our place we consecrate everything towards the Lord and say Lord we are yours our place is yours let your holiness be upon our places uh, surround our area with your with your celestial angels and to protect it to protect us you know because we're his we're his holy tabernacles set apart to do his will when you get saved you become his tabernacle and the, the holy of holies enters in you his all ark of the covenant enters in you through reading of his word through accepting the salvation in your life that he did on the cross at calvary and finally he uh uh erected the courtyard around the tabernacle of the altar and set up the screens for the entire courtyard and then the cloud covering the, the tent of meetings, the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. Amen. God wants his glory to fill our tabernacle inside of us every day. Amen. Our fresh. And uh, Moshe was unable to enter the tent of meetings because the cloud remained on it, meaning it's the pure authority and power of God his his love his his majestic everything of the Lord also wants to be that way in us and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle he wants to fill your tabernacle inside of you your spiritual tabernacle we everybody looks for a third temple well look no further if you're, you're born again the the, ta the tabernacle the temple of god is inside of man and woman now 
not on physicalness like it was the first and second one. First and second one has meaning only that that's what was happening spiritually in the future after the Lord died on that cross. The Lord of Lords and King of Kings, our salvation. He, When he died on the cross, he ripped the veil because he's saying now we are going to be his holy tabernacles. This is why it's insignificant to think about a third temple physically when it's a spiritual tabernacle with inside of men and women that are born again. That doesn't mean they're not going to try to do a tabernacle or, or, or a uh, temple of God, but it's going to have no meaning. It will have nothing, no meaning. It's, it's, it's the saved that are now his tabernacle. That is his holy temple. Amen. Whenever the cloud was uh, taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel, the prince of God, continued with all their travels. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not travel onward until the day when it was taken up. For the cloud of, of Yahweh was covering the, the tabernacle during the day, and fire was in the, the cloud at night, so that all of, of the house of Israel, all the house of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel, and the stench and the, the Arabs that get saved, could see throughout all their travels. Amen. So we are his holy tabernacle. You must understand that's what he did new. Salvation was not new. Salvation started the day that Adam and Eve left the garden. Salvation, grace is not new. Grace is throughout the Bible. Don't you let these modern day uh, uh, pastors and rabbis that don't know what they're doing. And they're not spirit filled. A lot of them. Say that all oh, grace and salvation started in math. No, it didn't. It started in Genesis. What's new, what he really did, and everybody misses the mark on this. What he did on dying on that cross was made it easier. The word is easier than you need on the salvation and grace. But that's not even the real big thing that he did, that everybody missed. He made his tabernacle that was physical into what he always wanted with man and woman. He wanted to have his holy tabernacle within men and women. And everybody misses the mark on this. You don't have to. God doesn't want you to miss the mark anymore of understanding what he really did. He wanted it to be with us in our hearts, deep in our hearts, so called a subconscious deep in there and and took that dead in spirit and making a living spirit and put in his tabernacle within that living spirit that he created in us when we're saved and take our hard hearts and give us a heart of flesh so that we can properly judge uh, right and wrong so that our brains just don't just judge unrighteously like when you were unsaved that we judge now righteously because of a, a subconscious where our spirit is, where Holy Tabernacle is, and, and also where the, uh, we have a new heart beating, in a sense, spiritually, not physically, but spiritually. And, and now we can rightly judge right and wrong through righteousness of the Word of God, through the, the holy tabernacle within us where the where the spirit of God reigns as the judge of judges over our spirit and and we go forth and do his will amen so this is exciting isn't it we are his holy tabernacle now don't don't fall for the lies anymore where oh we can't wait for a third temple or third or our second tabernacle no God's Ta holy tabernacle his holy temple is within men and women that's what the first and second one I'm not saying they might not try something but it, it won't have no meaning 
It will have no authority or power within it like the first two because it is in with men and women. See, men and women that are in the world look always on the outside. But God told his born again, look on the inside of you, not on the outside. See, and for so long, I think the church has gravitated more on the outside of, of life instead of the inside of life. And the things you can't taste, touch, or feel, the spiritual things, they have forgotten. It's time to remember these things, my friends, my brothers and sisters. For God loves you and I love you. And this is why I take my time out of my day for God and for you. Amen. So let's do the blessing of the end of this of Exodus. Huzzah, huzzah, avan chess. Be strong, be strong, and let us be strengthened in Yahweh alone. Amen. God loves you, and I love you. And many of you are watching, that are Arabs and, and other kinds of people all around the world. You feel, you feel the poking of the Holy Spirit, and you want to be changed. You want a fresh start in life. I hear you. I hear you. Herbs. You want to get right with the Creator God today. You, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yahweh. Our God of creation loves you. And wants, wants you to have a clean slate with Him. But you, know, you need to repent right now and say, Lord, I, I'm sorry for all I've done. And get prepared to do the salvation prayer. Are you ready to get saved? Arabs, are you ready to get saved? Uh, lukewarm Christians and Jews, people of the earth, land and sea. Are you ready to get saved? Just pray this prayer. Dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer. I know you're born again. And the baptism of the Spirit of God is happening. God has taken that heart of stone and given you a heart of flesh. He's taken that uh, spirit that is that has been stillborn and, and renewing it and making a living spirit in you. God is loving you right now. And he's showing he, how much he loves you through his eternal uh feeling of, of, of it. maybe it's the wind you feel maybe it's like a warmth maybe it feel like oil over you it's just the Lord loving you that's basically what it is and God loves you so much that he died upon the, the cross of Calvary so that you right now can have that renewed life like you're having right now now the baptism of the Spirit of God whelm up triple upon you blessings and read First and Second Peter, James, the Gospel of John, uh, the first two epistle of of John's one and two, and then I want you to read Deuteronomy. I want you just to take your time, go slow, and because quality doesn't go always fast. Quality has sometimes a moments of slowness of of reasoning and within it, so that we can understand what is going on or reading or whatever you're doing amen today's society moves too fast to today's society wants to go and di get things done like that it's not a jack-in-the-box um, window okay with god you must put quality in your life in the God's word. You must put quality in all that you do. God loves quality and we must go forth and have a quality life. Not a not just adding things up and, and, and just go fast. There's times and moments more of slowing it down to some hair and taking the time to look at every avenue of God's word and the deepness of it and taking all the words in your life and and put it in the holy tabernacle because remember the word of god is the new ark of the covenant the ark the first ark of covenant which is around it's in a sacred place believe me underground and it's fine where it's at but the second Ark of the Covenant, you can 
touch that. It's called the Word of God. You know, you can kiss it, hug it, read it, and learn from it, and let the words of the second ark of the covenant, the word of God, into your tabernacle, your holy tabernacle. Your holy tabernacle needs the ark of the covenant of today, the word of God. This is wonderful. The first one they couldn't even touch. If they touch it, they could disintegrate because it's so holy. Not, but you know what? This is holy too. This is set apart too. And this you can touch. This you can open. This you can look and find wonderful things in it that will make your life a better place. This is our holy tabernacle of today. People want to go what they know. But what they really should know is the updates within things. And that is, we are the holy tabernacle we are the holy temple today. This word of God is the new Ark of the Covenant, the second Ark of the Covenant. Not belittling the first one. No, not at all. But God knew when he made his spiritual tabernacle within men and women, his temple, holy temple within us, that we're going to need an Ark of the Covenant, a second Ark of the Covenant, that we can feel, touch, taste, hug it, kiss it, Look at it, open it up, and start reading it. And so the words of this pages can go in our hearts, our, our subconscious, deep in there, where our spirit resides, so that we be, can become more and more like God wants us to be. That doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. There's no such thing as what the dictionary of perfectness is. But now if you go by the biblical perfect, which is... Um, maturing more and more like God. Not saying being God, but liking unto God. Meaning we are maturing into what He is like. Because He wants us to fall after what He's like. Okay? Doesn't any daddy want to, that is a good dad, a good daddy, want their sons and daughters to fall like some of the righteous principles and good principles and, and you know if he's a carpenter or he's a metal worker don't you think he wants his kid to learn those kind of things if he's a, a mechanic to, to give some of that inheritance of knowledge to their kids well that's what God's trying to do I mean this is a miraculous beautiful thing called the word of God I mean we can touch it feel it taste it kiss it hug it open it up most importantly and read it and, and 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 allow these beautiful daddy God principles in our hearts today and every day. Isn't that wonderful? I imagine a lot of you never thought about some of these majestic words. I mean, this is God's heart. This is Abba, Daddy, Yahweh, Yeshua, Jesus, His heart for us. Now, are we going to read it? Are we going to are we going to get excited? Are we going to pray to God? Are we going to pray to Abba, our Yahweh, Yeshua, Jesus, every day? So I'm so proud of those of you that got saved today. Let me pray over you for the Father. I, I pray that they all do what you want. I pray that they will excel in all they do. And may the, the other creations of God, which is grouped in one word, angels, uh, minister unto them the good things of your word at all times. May they protect them. May they remove them from harms of, of danger. And I thank you, Father, and praise you in your holy name, Yahweh Shua. And we say shalom. Amen. God loves you. I love you. And let's end with the shalom prayer. And also those that need healing, read the healing scriptures throughout the Bible. And also, I pray the sovereignty of God's scepter of mercy be extended to you and make you whole this day. Amen. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Holiness brings peace to pass as our understanding be with you. Now that's never, never broken, complete peace of God, I leave you.
in the sovereignty of God Almighty, our Yeshua Jesus, be with you. May you be the light of the world, the salt of the earth, as God commands. Amen. Let's become great again, because greater is he that's in us than he is in the world. So let's become great again, church. Let's become great again, synagogue. Let's become great again, kingdom of Israel. Remember the, to read the Torah every day, O kingdom of Israel. Make sure you blow the shofar seven times, the ram's horns three times, after the, the, the reading of the prophets and the Torah. Every day, God commands the land of Israel to, to have seven shofar blows, read the Torah, read the prophets, and then three ram's horns after, and then a, a quick prayer of silence of, of respect to God. Every morning, O oh Israel, get get with the program of what God has commanded you through the word of God. He commands thee to do these things. So restructure your lives. It doesn't matter who gets offended. That's what God commands. It's his land that he gave to you, O oh Israel. So if he wants whatever he wants on his land, gets done. Okay? you got to understand that. And that's that's also for the the born again. But through the born again, we must always look at all the word. We must always understand that there's a lot there in God's word that the Spirit of God will reveal where we need to go. That's why we need to pray before we read. Amen. So God loves you and I love you. Let everything they have breath. Praise God. Let's be great again. Amen. Because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Amen. Shalom.